Four o'clock every day is play test, which is basically like church. Four o'clock is the, the true competitive time when everyone gets in and scrappy. They get the build and they play at their desks or here in the play lab, which we have behind me, and play Halo 5 and we just bang on it. It can definitely get heated at times. Fall back, fall back, fall back. Oh, we have a lot of trash talkers on the team, of course. You know, I'm swearing and cursing and blending. Halo kind of brings it out of you. And then it also escalates this. This guy pulled a scumbag move, in my opinion. Don't take credit for the worst name that came before that. People get really pissed off and they just start yelling at each other. Just having a great time. Let me grab the VR and run all the way over there and give them another one. <laughs> To me, a Spartan is speed, power, agility. This vision, this myth of a Spartan as a superhero. Completely wrapped in technology. That thousand pound jet fighter on legs or tank on legs, you know, it's this total destruction machine. You see Chief coming down out of orbit, hitting the ground and, you know, doing all of that stuff. We want to bring that into the gameplay itself. In typical Halo, you have the already awesome sandbox of the weapon, the melee, and the grenade. We wanted to add these Spartan abilities in as a fourth layer that everyone has, so it's equal footing. They're baseline traits. Every single person who wants them can have them. You sprint as fast as the other players, you jump as high as the other players, you clamber like they do. What might end up being on the most sort of overarching ability is this thruster pack ability. These little retro rockets built into your Spartan armor. It can give you a speed boost while you're running, but you can use it in midair. Jump up in the air and I turn my stabilizers on, these jets kick in. You can go back forward all directions. We're not really limiting these things, we're actually allowing you to chain them. So for me, the thruster pack is awesome and allows you to do other new moves as well. It actually enhances the thing we call the ground pound, which is dashing down to the ground and then creating this kind of shock wave splash effect. When you jump up, you actually can mount on top of edges throughout the world. There's really satisfying things like just about making a jump and hitting the clamber button at the last second and making it the way you felt like you should have made it. Once you reach terminal velocity with sprint, you'll get an indication that if you hit crouch during that time, you'll launch into a slide. You can slide into cover more quickly. Uh, you can slide into a kill with a shotgun you kind of really have to make an important decision on the battlefield. So once you gain that terminal velocity, you can use slide, but you also can choose to charge. You hit your melee button, you just bash through anyone. We know like there are people that love Sprint and there are people that just feel like Sprint has no place in Halo. And so for us, it was about how do we balance that? How do we counter that? connected it to your shield, so while you're sprinting, your shields don't recharge. If they keep running, their shields will never come back up and somebody else is gonna take them down. I think that balance is really interesting. Smart scope fiction is actually, it's been built into the game since day one. You were doing it with a pistol. It was cybernetically linked to your helmet. And the, the Spartan would see what was ultimately just a zoom. Every weapon now has a zoom in. Holographic image comes up, it's all slick. It helps me with some types of weapons, especially rapid fire weapons in my case, but otherwise I tend to just aim, aim from the hip anyway. Hip fire mode is accurate, same as it ever was. If it becomes such that everybody feels like they have to be using smart scope in order to be competitive, then we've broken the game. You're gonna use your smart scope and zoom in with any weapon, but you also can be de-scoped out of it by the enemy. <laughs> There are so many different tactics that come into play, and that's something that we've tried to build into all of the abilities for Halo 5. Finding a balance between making the abilities accessible and making them meaningful is, is weirdly difficult. But we try to get as big a variety of players in as we possibly can, so we have our pro team playing, obviously. Pro team has been amazing to have. It's a resource I've never had on the team before, where you have such a, a rabid vocal community, and then you bring some of them in who are really good at the game. I'm under, I'm under, two above me, two above me, three above me. They do things that you would never expect. They find any, any upper hand that they can find in the game, they're gonna exploit. And that's, that's good, that's what we wanna see because then we can fill those holes. And so we knew that if we had those people on site, that would make our game so much better because we would have all that knowledge. It's a really good shortcut 
to good test data. In terms of playing the pro team, that is a horribly demoralizing experience. Uh, that does not end well, playing against pro team. Basically just getting pounded on, brutalized. You are this little baby mouse, and they are like this gigantic puma just batting you around, and then finally putting you out of your misery. And that's not fun. We're in the play lab. It's pros versus devs. This isn't happening! Uh, I wouldn't say I'm nervous. This isn't happening! Yeah, it's more so anxious, I think is the right word. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> Charging you, they're both weak. How are you not stuck? Oh no! Oh, yeah, Slay those guys. They push across. You gotta punish them if they push across. Yeah, I'm pushing in. I'm pushing in. Let's go. Now take. Oh, come on. Flank, flank, guys. You're all alone. Tower, tower, tower three, tower two. Dead, dead. Don't try to grab on me, son. It's so bad. Oh. Are you gonna try oh, next time? One. Enemy team facing the elimination. I'd probably, I'd probably be called the cheapest player. <laughs> that would probably be me. I uh, do a lot of uh, what I call play to win. We're kind of the old school beta where it's like, our, here's our software that isn't finished yet. Honestly, we're nervous about it, right? Like we think, we think we've got it all figured out and then we're gonna throw it out there and everyone's gonna break it. So for us, we come in, we play the game every day, but there's only so many people here at 343, there's only so much we can do. But now, this is about opening it up to the world. Tuning and balancing is the core of the arena experience, and if we get that tuning wrong, then uh, we want to hear about it. Taking that feedback and trying to make the game better, that's, that's what the beta is all about. I mean, when you get a bunch of creatives, there's always uh, disagreements. You might want to dial that back, you might want to turn it up, because that's what's great about this beta. We're getting this out there for people to really try. The second that the beta goes live, we're all going to be online playing with the fans. Yeah, my gamer tag is D's. You want some? Come get it. All right. So. <laughs> For at least the first two or three hours, I expect to be very competitive with the world before they figure this game out. Good job. <laughs> and I'm going to savor those two to three hours of glory where I am stomping everybody else at my own game and then they're going to turn the tables on me and it's not gonna be pretty. There's so much creativity. Everybody has the same moves. It's up to you, how do you employ them on the battlefield? Kind of chaotic, but at the same time, tactical decision making that everyone has at their disposal. And it is that chess match. Halo has got a new set of teeth. I mean, this game has got some fangs on it. You ready? Have you been practicing? Get on scrubs. <laughs> <laughs>